somewhere in the crowd of insects busy among these dwarf shrubs, there's the one exact customer for which the orchid is so passionately advertising. But what is it that will lure the long-horned bee away from the pleasures of other flowers? These virgin flowers not only look like female bees, but smell like them. They exude a seductive perfume, identical to that secreted by female bees. Males are irresistibly drawn into an embrace. What follows is a sequence of remarkable events. He is further deceived by the shape and furry texture of her bee-like lip. He attempts to mate, but will never achieve his own satisfaction. Frustrated, he'll move from flower to flower. But that's a part of the orchid's ploy. Were he to be satisfied, he'd quickly lose interest and fly off before collecting pollinia. The orchid drives the bees into so great a passion that rival males will struggle to possess a single flower. Suddenly, these yellow pollinia attach to one of them. A success for the orchid, but no satisfaction for the bee who persists with this hopeless mating. finally has to rest a while, and the two pollinia complete a forward bending movement that'll leave them well aimed and ready for the bee's next onslaught on a flower. The bee will visit other flowers following its usual routine, but eventually he'll be lured into the same deception by another bee orchid, where the pollinia will make precise contact with the stigma ahead and leave their pollen grains. Successfully fertilized, the deceiving flower fades. And in the following days, the capsule swells with the developing seeds and rises to stand upright, the ideal position for scattering the seeds to the wind. It sometimes happens that the insects transfer pollen between two different kinds of orchid. The resultant seeds grow into plants that are a colorful mixture of the two parents. Such hybrids are usually sterile. They have a fleeting beauty without a future.